How's it, everyone? Welcome back. This is the Mac Coast to Coast Show. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you know when we go live. Here's your host, Brian McLamara. Hey, Mac Coasters. Welcome to the Mac Coast to Coast Show 2021. We're getting it, getting it in this year, baby. Now, look, I want to give a little special uh, request out that uh, if you guys are watching, please subscribe to our channel. This is the way that the Macs eat. Save a Mac and subscribe. You know, and if you don't like the content or you do, go ahead and post a comment. We want to know. We're all learning here and, well, we want to serve you guys the best way that we can. And, of course, as always, I'm joined by the two largest Macs in the Mac universe. We've got Razzle. Wow, man, I was just looking outside, and I think there's a whole pack of Mac heads in my front yard. Mac heads? I love it. And here's here's T-Mac head. What's popping? What's cracking? What's happening, everybody? Is this thing live, dude? I mean, I ain't heard a comment out of nobody, dude. Is it recording or what? Let's Testing. go, baby. Test Subscribe. these tests. Let's do One, it. two. All right. Enjoy the show. So, hey, guys. It's hey. another week. Big week. Yeah. What's been going oh, on? Life is good, brother. How you been? Good, man. Just uh, surviving the winter. Got a little little snow sprinkle outside. A little salt on the Bible, if you know what I'm saying. Looks like you got your ears lowered a little bit. Yeah, you cleaned yeah. up. You yeah. know what's going on? I thought you'd grow a beard when it's cold, but you shaved yours off. What's going on? Yeah, you looking clean, like, dude. I'm like, like a, a she- surf dude. I'm like a sheep, dude. I gotta get shorn every season. They gotta take. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What about you, Raz? What's going on over there in the FLA? Uh, I just got back from the beach. It's like 80 degrees, and there's uh, the beach was empty. You know, I had like two people out there. It's like nice. Nice, right? Water, on. water was a little nipply, but other than that, good times. <laughs> You know, one of my fondest memories of going to the beach was when I was in my 20s, and uh, we went out to Cocoa Beach in Florida, me and my girlfriend. And, Cocoa uh, Beach, baby, all right. Yeah, we, we uh, me and about 20 other spectators surrounded a policeman, in a, or maybe a couple of policemen and a, a guy, and they were just tasing the hell out of him over <laughs> and over <laughs> and over again. It was like oh. a, a maybe horrible cycle. Maybe needed a good jump start. <laughs> I think so. I was like, I'll have what he's having. Nice. You know, you know I have some fondling memories of Cocoa Beach, too. Do tell. Yeah, what is it? Fondling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Wow. Nice. <laughs> the fondling. Hey, I lived there a few years. I hope I got to fondle something every once in a while. That's Jeez. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh... T Mac, what's going on in Hawaii? How's every how's the the water changed since uh, the president, the new presidential election has taken over? Uh, you know, out here is kind of just we're out here in a safe world out here, bro. People, you know, come on out to Hawaii, bro. We need it, man. Come on, come on back. Anyway, everything's good, dude. We've we just had a little cold front. Our cold fronts are just rain and uh, a lot of flooding yesterday, and uh, it's a rainy day today. But other than that, you know, it's all good, man. I mean, can't complain. I love it. I hate complaining. I saw, well, actually, I, I love saw, to complain. But <laughs> I saw that they dug a trench down Waimea where they could surf that little river that goes down into the bay. Yeah, you saw that at night they did it this time or something, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, it was awesome, man. You guys check that out on YouTube, man, while you're, uh, you know, subscribing to us. Just run over there and check it out. Yeah, but, it's pretty uh, cool, man. They were ripping on that. It gets like to, you know, it gets like shoulder high that little wave, man. It's like guys are ripping on that thing. Yeah, the waves, waves, uh, look massive. I saw some good footage of some guys surfing out there, and a, one guy jumped it with his jet ski. Did you see yeah. that? What's yeah, did you see guy? that? That guy was a pro photographer, and he got hurt. Did he? Yeah, uh, he got hurt. He that was like a fifteen foot jump. It looked like Evil Knievel going over the back of that wave. 
I mean, that's brutal, dude. Well, I mean, riding those jet skis is just like riding a motorcycle, pretty much, you know, on the water. Right? You know, it is. It really yeah. is. Do you guys, have you guys ridden a lot of jet skis or motorcycles? That's funny you ask. Yeah, uh, me and Raz back in the day, we used to live in Waikiki together. And I, I bought this old Route 66 Yamaha back then. And uh, me and Raz were, you know, we, we grew up on little mopeds and, you know, little stuff but this was the first real motorcycle i ever owned and How many i remember CCs getting it and and we didn't have a license or nothing dude insurance <laughs> no <laughs> we just we were riding dude. waikiki just illegal wow. just loving it dude and Max. just and then raz bought him like a what was it a rebel honda rebel yeah they were just little 250s man we were just it was nice because it took us like a minute to get to work <laughs> and then you could park anywhere and uh she, I got pulled over one night, this tourist girl, and we got drunk on the Mai Tai sale, and cop pulls me over because I had my shades on. And you're not supposed to wear your sunglasses at night, but that's all I had for riding glasses. So, uh, and he's telling me, oh, I can't let you drive this thing, man. So, you know, I go up and park it in this parking lot, and then me and the girl are walking down the road, and then I say, let's go. <laughs> we just ran out there and <laughs> jumped on it. <laughs> that's great Rebels, dude. it was like two blocks from the house dude i was in the parking garage in like seconds you know but i was scared as i was freaking out you know was it what the same you, bike Ryan? oh did you guys share the same bike or the different no bike? he had a rebel he had a honda he went and bought a honda rebel and i had my yamaha route 66 so okay we I both had one we got we kind of were getting into motorcycles you know we were like dude this is fun as hell you know, you ride down the road and everybody's shocking you, and you know, it's like a, it's a brotherhood of bikers, right? Well, you plus know? we used to drive it up North Shore through the tunnels and up in the mountains. It was pretty awesome. How many yeah. CCs were those bikes? They were just two fifties. Okay. Yeah, they're just the little ones. Yeah. That's okay. I I've it's never like ridden a... any bikes. Oh, you never rode motorcycles at all, Brian? No, I mean I rode bitch on the back with my buddy on a on eleven 1, hundred. Freaking ninja or whatever. Golly, he probably scared the crap out of you. Oh yeah, he was insane. So this dude, he lived on a gravel road, and he would, uh, he would, uh, his thing was to do wheelies. Like oh, every time I left his house, I was driving this jeep. <laughs> I'm driving, the wind, the freaking doors are off, and I'm driving. Yeah, gravel road, and he's just like, <laughs> like he totally buzzed me, man. Buzzed the tower, freaked me out. Yeah, wow. But um, I made a little video many years ago that maybe I showed you guys, maybe I didn't, called the Not So Incredible Hulk, where I was David Bummer, and whenever I grew embarrassed or upset, I shrank and turned into a little green whiny guy. <laughs> and it's, I lost everything except for my shirt. So when I turned back into David Bummer, I was a, dude, a full grown dude walking around with just a shirt. <laughs> oh man. You know, wow. it would be awesome. If, uh, you know, we could get the uh, whole motorcycle uh, community involved in our podcast. And if we only had a guest to bring on, you know. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, well, well, surprise, surprise. Do we have a guest? We do have a special guest today, Raz. Well, what, what's his name? Damon George. Some of you guys know him. He's a ex-pro surfer. Uh, he worked for On a Mission. And now he's a... Uh, General Manager of Cycle Zombies and Nash Motor. David Bye. George, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, David, what's up, brother? Ah, ah, there you go. What's up, Kitty? Yeah, boy, Skeevy Heaves in the house, baby. Long time no talk, man. Welcome to the Matt Coast to Coast show. Glad to have you on, bro. Thanks for taking the time. What's going on? It's a Tuesday. Tuesday in paradise right now. <laughs> So yeah, how's the weather over there in Cali right now? Cold. Water's cold. Air's cold. Well, now, what we is cold to you? Uh, 58 degrees? 56 degrees? Wow. I mean, if it's like 40, 43 or above, I'm riding around in my convertible, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to Brian, dude. He's, he's from up there where it snows and, it, it, you know, it's cold as balls where he's at. Yeah, I'm in D.C. In, it's like 30. It's been yeah. the 30s all week. Ooh. Yeah, we're, we're 58 degree water and six, 55 degree air right now today. Wow, yeah. that's, 
That's pretty chilly, dude. That's oh, pretty man. cold when you're jumping in the water. For sure. I tell you, oh, yeah. that's, that's enough to. Cold. That's enough to make me wrap my Peter in a warm towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pee an extra extra time in your wetsuit for that one. Warm neoprene. Yeah, warm yeah. right on up. Neoprene, bounty, whatever the hell works. Yeah, so how's life? How's the kids? Everything good? Kids are good, grown. The boys, uh, 21 and uh, 3, 3, 19th of this month, February almost, so coming up. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. I saw uh, that nice Harley he was driving. Who was, is that his? Yeah, he built that one. That's his own bike. Sweet. Nice. Yep. That the yeah. <clears throat> that's a, that's the second one actually. He built the first one. We uh, we did it more together. This uh, the second bike that he built. He sold the first one, put the money into a, a new bike, and built this one pretty much all by himself, ground up. I didn't really. I mean, we gave him a little input here or there, but that was his like first project, pretty much all by himself. So uh, proud of the kid. Guys got the way with the hands. He's definitely. Um, not afraid to get dirty, you know. Blue well, that's car. cool. So yeah, I wanted to kind of start out the show by like, uh, you know, letting our guests and our followers know what you're all about, and uh, you know, you're a GM of your uh, cycle company. I'd like to hear about it. Yeah, yeah you- I mean, I work for two different companies, um, both related to the motorcycle world. You know, you you both of you guys know started off the surf world in our roots. You know, all the stuff that we. Uh, we used to do surfing and whatnot, you know, working for a bunch of different brands and then got into the, to the Harleys back in about 2006 or so. Oh, that's um, awesome. And then found an opportunity inside of, uh, the, the motorcycle world, you know, in the, <clears throat> the motorcycle world was kind of jumping onto like the skate scene and a lot of skaters were building, little sportsters, little Harleys and whatnot. And, you know, it was an easy way to get from skate park to skate park. We got the cats chilling right here. I like <laughs> it. What's the cat's name? Uh, Rufus. 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 <laughs> yeah, Rufus. Hey, he kind of looks like Raz's cat, dude. He kind of yeah, has that the, same look. He's a, a big old bulb cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's um, cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, sir. Skate industry, man. Like so, the surf so industry. I know you used to work for on a mission back in the day. I remember you were you worked for on a mission. You had all the surf stuff going on, and now that you've transferred to the to the motorcycle life, and you know, um, tell me about it, man. Like, what's it like? And uh, you get a thrill when you you know you guys sell motorcycles, or what's the scoops? Yeah, no, no, no selling motors. Well, that's not true. No selling motorcycles like like if you went to the car dealership, you know. No, uh, no off the shelf kind of deal. Um, all custom motorcycles, custom motorcycle lifestyle um, is really what it's about. Building um, old bikes, you know, bringing them back from the dead. Really, anything like pre eighty nine nineties, you know, and that's not even really old. You're talking like fifties. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s bikes, really. Um, all mostly Harleys. We don't. I don't really dabble in anything else. Um, just doing a, you know, choppers, man. Building choppers, not not like your your regular kind of motorcycle. It's really taking all the old stuff and chopping the frames and making some cool cool shit out of uh, you know old old Harleys and whatnot. Um, but uh, it's like the surf industry, man. It's um it's been cool to actually kind of get away from the surf industry and now i just surf for fun you know i don't really i'm not really chasing the you know the normal surf stuff i'm worrying about all those kind of things now i can surf and have fun and, and the motorcycle community is pretty similar in a sense of tight-knit group you know um yeah and, and a lot of people into it you know differences you're out there on the road and it's it's very much like surfing and skateboarding put that helmet on especially with the pandemic in the last <clears throat> um, scamdemic in the last two years, you know, or a year and a half, we've been going through it. Um, get on that bike, put your helmet on. You don't have to worry about the mask. You know, you got a couple homies and just rip out on these things and, you know, go get away for three, four, five hours of the day, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. 
and just go find a nice little spot and get off your bike, take your helmet off. But, you know, it feels very much, very, very much flow like surfing is. You know, it's not like surfing. So, I mean, nothing's like surfing but surfing. But it's so kind you of got, you got one of them bikes where your arms are like this when you're riding and you got your, what do you got, uh, like a surfboard rack on the side? Or how does uh, that work? <laughs> so you can't... I can't, I can't mix the surfing and the skating the, or surfing and motorcycles together, you know. Oh, you can't, um, you know, I see the scooters with the board on the side. Oh, you can't hook one of them yeah. up on there or something. Yeah, I mean, you could do that with those electric bikes and all that, you know. And like Bali, you know, you see those cats, <laughs> like, they got the little 100s Fly. and stuff flying through the, you know, in Bali, you get your little surf rack and, yeah. and there's some dudes that, that do that here. You get like a 100. I got an old uh, um, Suzuki, a 100 in the in the storage unit we're about to get that thing going it's an old 71 72 but that's the kind of bike you put the rack on there and you can go down and you know check the surf and park it chain it up and go for a surf get out and get yeah, back you, on don't the have, you don't have butt. to worry about fighting for a parking star or nothing you just pull up strap yep. it up you yeah out exactly. there, you know? but yeah. yeah that's not really that's not really what what i've been doing it's more like you know riding the, the cool choppers nothing up here you know that's kind of like I mean, there's dudes that like that, but my stuff's more like right here. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, you cool. start getting them big old ape hangers, and you can't even feel your hands when you're riding. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we, were, you know, we were talking. We were talking about that earlier. Me and Raz had motorcycles in Waikiki back in the day, you know, and we were we were we got excited riding them, and I know that it's like a a brotherhood of bikers, right? You know, when you ride down the road and the the boys are like, woo. You know, oh, yeah. it's how like, does that you know, feel, you're doing you know? this and it's like this. It's like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's Everybody up? Everybody, right? right yeah. Hey, what's up? Like, eventually, yeah. you can't even say, hey, what's up, too many times because it gets too, too uh, annoying. But yeah, it is. You know, brotherhood, sisterhood. I mean, out here, man, everyone's riding chicks, dudes, you know, young cats like Egan's generation. They're the young bloods coming up and they're keeping an old school, dirty 70s chopper. You know, let me, uh, let, let me pull away for a second. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. Hey, Pull Brian, away. Brian what? would look good with that clean cut on a new mo motorcycle, hey, dude. Hey, here you go. This is this is a Christmas gift right here from the boy. That's a oh nice, photo, nice photo. Photo his buddy took. Look, ripping down yeah. the road. Is that him? Look, yeah, that's yeah. the boy right there, man. Uh, <laughs> so what is that? Is that yeah, a uh, that's a, a Harley? Shovelhead. Yeah, that's an AD shovel head. Like he, that's not even what that bike looked like before. That bike looked like something else, and that's the chopper that he turned it into. But the young bucks are keeping it straight, man. They're making an old chopper style, you know, before when it was all just old and grimy and dirty. Plus, you got your own your own mechanic living there, right? <laughs> right around there. Uh, uh, I mean, that's us, man. I've been learning yeah. to wrench on bikes. I mean, that's been probably the last, like, 10. You know, we still, like, don't know at all. I got to call in the lifeline to those – that know more than me but you know we just kind of learn it ourselves so yeah, yeah i think when I, I think when i met you you didn't even know how to use the damn screwdriver <laughs> which, which end which end is it i'm just kidding <laughs> is that a phillips or a regular what is that <laughs> it really just depends on what you're doing with it boys uh, That's is, that right. a ten, is that a 10 millimeter or are you happy to see me <laughs> no you're very you know you're very right about that so uh i've never really gotten into bikes i'm a big into cars and yeah. uh you know that's the thing is that you'll meet these these uh dipshits pardon my language that are like yeah yeah that's the way it is and i'm like man you don't fucking know like <laughs> doesn't matter how long you've been doing it you have no idea i i used to work in a shop and we would see shit every day that was different every oh, single yeah. day i mean there's there's constants with it that are pretty similar but yeah you know everyone's kind of got their own thing and it's um you get the same dipshits and motorcycles too but you know everyone thinks they know something but a lot of times they don't um it's always the good ones have been around a long time pass down the the good knowledge um that you kind of want to pull up next to and you know keep in your your uh your friendship group because those are the guys that are passing on all the info that they knew but we've got two shops you know we build custom bikes and stuff up there a lot of parts and things um it's cool man i i, I dig it it's it's rad to have kind of pulled away from the surfing side of things really more is like my job and and doing this and that way i can appreciate surfing for fun you know and the bike thing is fairly new in the last 
you know, 12 years or so. So I haven't grown tired of, um, you know, it's like surf industry. You, you work more than you surf. You know, that was always the, the thing that the dudes that worked in the industry knew. Like, oh, everyone's like, oh, surf industry must be rad. Like, get to surf all the time. And, you know, that's what it's all about. And it's like, nope, you're behind the computer when the waves are firing. <laughs> so now I'm, you know, in the office or whatever, but I make the time to, to go split and surf in the morning before or whatever. You know, I can find those windows better because my job isn't surfing now it's motorcycles so and we and we just were talking about that too out here we've had like a unbelievable january uh what california what the way has been firing huh dude it's been we we've, we've had such a long run of surf it's i don't know that i've seen that long a run wow it's like right when it got down to like two to three feet then it was right back up to four to six feet again you know swell direction wasn't perfect for around my house as much um little bit more west in it but yeah it's it's been really good i mean obviously like mavericks was firing and was that wave uh saturday epic saturday last saturday yeah, yeah that I, epic yeah Ooh, that's crazy that that right hand i don't know if i jumped on where exactly it was it didn't look like jaws to me but that day looked like wherever that was that they were towing i think into that was honolulu bay that that right that he got barreled on that double barrel is that what you're talking about yeah, that, that, and then obviously the left-hand side, too, of wherever they were all out. Um, I saw, like, John John and, like, some Oh, of the yeah, the outer reef break. Yeah, yeah, man, that thing was insane. I think it was, like, 30-foot face. Like, unbelievable. John John just out there just playing around like it's his backyard. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and we were talking. Them on, the, on the jet skis, and I'd be, like, okay, <laughs> going out. And they're just all <laughs> cracking jokes and, like, yeah, you know, it's all funny. I know, but about to go paddle out and it was i don't know dude it was mind-blowing yeah it really crazy. was i remember yeah. one got- one winter when i was in working in waikiki and uh sean was out on the north shore with kelly and everything and he's yeah calls me up he goes hey man we're going to do tow-ins you want to go i was like hell no i worked the graveyard <laughs> shift i'd been up all night and i was all delirious i was yeah. like i i ain't going out there if i was like you know, peak form and, yeah. and no, you know, I'd be scared as hell. Lifestyle. Yeah. Just give me anything like four to six feet or smaller and I'm just as perfect as could be. Yeah, they're talking about that now. They're having big problems with like every Tom, Dick and Harry got in their own jet ski going out and just, yep. you know, I mean, they're, they're trying to put some regulations on it because you got every <laughs> every kook in town trying to charge and it's dangerous man i mean people don't realize that yeah just because you got a jet ski don't mean that you're good you know i mean there's a lot to it man you gotta you gotta really understand it and how the waves work and so yeah all you gotta do is all you gotta do is click on kai lenny's freaking instagram and watch a couple of those hold downs that he had go down um was it him, him that recorded it or was it uh you you know Tibby. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw it, bro. That was insane. Yeah, dude, I was getting like butterflies watching his GoPro of just whoa, and then coming back up, and then and that was at Nazarene. Then another one came and going under. That was like four wave hold down. I was trying to hold my breath every time, and I was like, yeah, I could do it. He was down by like forty seconds, but the, just the pure impact of all that, like right, yeah, that like, that no wave's idea. like fifty foot high, you know. Yeah. That's getting yeah. rolled over by moving concrete, you know, it's, it's crazy. The same yeah, thing even with motorcycles, dude... though, you know, bringing it back to that, like, dudes think they're like, oh, yeah, some's anarchy, and they see all these bike shows, and they think it's all cool, and like you're saying, the brotherhood, which is definitely the thing, but, you know, people go out, they get that bike, they get their vest, they buy all their little, you know, all their boots and stuff, and then they get out there on the road, and then they, they realize real quick, like, <laughs> holy crap, like, cars are ripping by me. <laughs> People are ripping by me. Like, I'm over right. here 65 miles an hour on a motorcycle. I'm scared to death, and I don't have that in me to, like, pin it. You know, it's just it's just in you. I mean, I'm not jumping my bike, but I when I get on my bike and I'm hauling ass and splitting lanes and stuff, I dig it. It's not for everyone. You know, some people right. put all that money to them and find out, like, I'm selling this thing. Like, <laughs> we're going to unload it real quick. This is not me at all, you know. So, yeah. thank you. This, uh, you know, looks good from afar until you get it's your the same like surfing, right? The guys that always had the nice boards, they go buy all the gear and they, but they didn't have any experience, you know, same thing, right? With the bikes. 
same thing, same thing, and it'll yeah. it'll bite you. You know, it, right. it could, you're putting your life out there. It's not like you're you know got a new uh, toy. It won't hurt you. That sh that shit will hurt you. You know, like getting a jet ski and ripping out to uh, to Jaws, and you have no business being out there. You gotta gotta know so, what you're capable of. So I wanted to ask you, like, how does it work? Like, uh, people look you up and online, or how does that work to where they oh, find? Yeah you guys and then up. maybe we can link, link people to your uh how it works and what do they bring you an old bike and you guys you know fix it up is that how it works yeah what's the name of your shop i'm a little confused oh. you got two businesses yeah two businesses i work for two separately they're, they're not even related though they're both in the industry um i think you pulled up one of the websites which was nash motorcycle co yep that's us right there you can typical website you can Scroll through there, click on the links, see all the uh, the products and things. We build everything U.S. made, man. That That's 100%. The bikes are more of a commission basis. We don't really build bikes like a dealership where you come in and go, hey, I want that bike right there. You know, I want the picture of that one. Um, those are all were built um, specifically with, a, you know, a thought in mind, like an artistic piece, you know, the – the owner actually that I work for there, Tabor Nash is his name. Those are all his 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 uh, his babies he built. But you know they're they're kind of thing where you you build it and the right person has the money and they like the bike and then they buy it. You know we don't really take on business where you know someone goes, hey, build me a bike. We, we will do that, but it's more we build a bike and then when it's ready to go, if, you know if it speaks to someone and they've got the the money to buy it then they they buy it so it's like that kind of custom type thing um and with the other brand cycle zombies you can check those guys out too um different situation we're more of a apparel um brand with cycle zombies the the family that started that brand that i work with the gm there that i handle we do mostly like apparel but that's a really cool story because these guys right here that's that's uh the son their dad in the background and little brother right there, but they're a family of like seven. Um, all the boys in the family ride choppers. Their dad's been building hot rods and motorcycles in Huntington Beach since the 70s. Passed it down the line to his kids and Scotty, his uh, his oldest son is who I work with on that brand, Cycle Zombies. But it's like a family thing, but they all surf and skate and stuff too. Amazing skateboarders, really good surfers. Um, so it was like the whole motorcycle mashup with um, surfing and skateboarding and that's just apparel not anyone can click on there and check out our t-shirts I'm wearing one of our sweatshirts right here cycle zombies California. so it's cyclezombies.com and uh, nash.com or how's that nash, nash motorcycle.com okay yeah all right pretty dope did, dude pretty dope over there over there at nash we did something with one of your boy Jason Momoa one of the Hawaiians um, we just did some some collab pieces, this like cool uh, hammer that we casted and like a belt and whatnot. So, you know, we're doing a little, a couple little cool projects with Jason Momoa. So he's all into the old motorcycles and he's got a bunch of like forties knuckleheads and got a couple pans and whatnot. So yeah, it's a little bit where Hollywood mixed in with the motorcycle and he's down with the blue collar people. So he came over and wanted to check out our handcrafted products and next yeah so he's got his signature line or something with you guys or something right I, I went on there and checked it out i can't remember exactly but he, he does uh he's got his own website called on the roam and basically it just talks about how he roams you know wherever he's at man he 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 meets people in this motorcycle world and you know handcrafted whether they're making motorcycle parts or you know rings or art pieces or apparel or leather but most of it if not all of it's U.S. made type stuff, and he likes to highlight those brands um, while he's out on his travels. And then he kicks back to them by throwing a little shout out, and you know that guy shouts out your stuff, and boom, people come one check it out. You know, so um, right. that's what he's really about. You know, he's, he's doing some cool stuff like that, and it's also part of what he's into motorcycles, and he's like into uh, like climbing and whatnot. He's like a climber. He did some some stuff with a brand out there that he's part of that, you know, they make climbing shoes, rock climbing, stuff like that. And yeah. Anyway, he's actually worked with both the brands. He's a now. sexy man. Yes, he is. He's good. He's How long does it take for you guys to build a bike out? Um, 
three months, I'd say on the long end, just depends. You know, it's really about, we've got, I mean, we got all the parts in the shop right now. We could build a, a bike in 30 days if we wanted to. Um, it really comes down to, as it comes together, you got to find those right parts because a lot of the bikes that we're building are, you know, found old parts from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So it's not about going pulling something off the bo- off the shelf in a box and putting it on. It's about curating this this bike with like an old Wassel tank from the 50s or 60s and a you know an old bait seat that was you know made in the same era of time. So you put those parts on original old Harley and you know you find a lot of the other stuff and so it's really about curating it and then putting it together so I mean it's a journey 30 days yeah. so it's unique and makes it badass yeah, right yeah. so, so do you yeah. guys like so do you <clears throat> clearly you would be if somebody wanted to commission a bike you guys would make one right no yes. <laughs> we would if the price how much money low. <laughs> right that's i mean right like if somebody came to you was like i want to make a mac coast to coast bike like yeah you know, you would absolutely make it, it it would it it could happen let me just put it to you that way the problem with commission bikes are is that when people get involved and money's involved then they tend to want to dictate so it's better if they go man i just love what you do this is what i want i want a you know a 40s knucklehead or a 50s pan head and i kind of like this look you know, this like 60s chopper or early 50s choppers, um, and then you just build it. That's that's kind of how we do it because once you get involved, and I think you look back to the old shows like Jesse James and, you know, those guys were building motorcycles in like the 90s and early 2000s. You know, I think Shaq got a bike from Jesse, and, I mean, he's amazing. That guy's amazing, amazing fabricator, amazing bike builder, but it was a different era. There's all these like theme bikes and stuff. That was like a commission thing with the, you know, the TV shows and – just gets hard because dudes with money and then they're particular and you know it ends up we've learned that it becomes kind of a a nightmare at times so it's best just to build the bike and then find the buyer you know that kind of thing so but yeah i mean you know loosely we would definitely do a bike if someone had the money and said this is what i want so what if somebody just got a shitty bike and just welded the Mac Coast to Coast logo on the side of the uh, tank? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> took you a bunch of that? pictures for a photo yeah, shoot. Tomorrow. We pushed it in, <laughs> took a bunch of pictures, and then said, hey, you can do whatever you want with the bike. Make some sound effects. <laughs> 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 <Ready? laughs> do a green screen. Park a lot with a green screen, green, modest. Yeah, 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 green screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get your motor running. So in other words, yeah. when they buy a bike from you guys, it's like getting a tattoo or like, you know, something. I mean, you know what I yeah. mean? Like it's original. You feel good when you jump on your yeah. bike. Dude, well, it's like buying a piece of art. Nobody else has, you know. It's like buying a piece yeah. of art, That's, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Absolutely. That's a great analogy. It is like a tattoo because, you know, Rock, you go. Rideable and, art. Yeah. And you, the tattoo artist always has his input into what he's putting on your body, you know, most of the time. Same thing, you know, we just have more say so in it because kind of know what we want to do with the bikes and, you know, so it's got to be the right fit for the, for the thing, you know. So, yeah, I mean, how do you guys feel when, you know, you, you know, somebody that bought one of the bikes from you guys or had the work done and then you see them riding down the road, you get that high feeling like, you know, that's our bike, dude, you know, that, that must feel good, right, for you? Oh, absolutely. And, but today with social media, it goes right there. You know, people are ready to throw it out and go like, you guys this new bike that I just got, you know, new bike that we just built. Um, it's, uh, it definitely makes you feel good when people are stoked on, you know, getting something for it. I mean, we build with the, with the Nash company, we build a ton of, of parts, handlebars and things that go on other people's bikes. And we get the same from that. You know, they may have a stock Harley 2020, 18, 16, whatever year. And they want to take all the stock stuff off. It's just like a car, you know, you get a new truck and you want to put some, 20s on it or some mud tires or change it up um we do the same so there's a lot more of those parts that are affordable for a couple hundred bucks dudes put on their bikes and change out some things and that's our stuff and you know that that really really stokes you out because now their experience is like you know they customize their stuff a little bit and they give you props for you know getting an a man uh, uh sorry a u.s made uh product of ours on their bikes that's that's cool you know they took the time to go this is a good brand we want to we want to put this on here i mean we're us made which is huge right now um we build it all with our own hands it's not overseas or you know the prices are more expensive but you get 
you get to talk to the people that are building the parts and that's super important. Um, that wasn't right. stuff that I, or surf industry, you know, the surf industry, everything was printed overseas or maybe domestic, but all the apparel and board shorts and stuff were made in China and, you right. know, and yeah, and all these other places. Um, it's been cool to kind of switch gears and, and build things U S and, and put those back in people's hands. You know, it's given me a renewed pride in what we can do domestically. Um, USA baby USA that's cool man that's awesome man I, I like what you're doing Damis it's really yeah. cool are you are, are you still located in Cal what part of California are you in now same Oceanside no. yep you know it all right I love it yeah, yeah man me too. Can I you miss ask? that place dude back in the day when I went you know that time when me and Raz oh, we yeah. all hung out dude those were the days bro I you know yeah. it was cool out back right out back, dude. I got some barrels out there. I had fun. I loved it. Glassy all day. It was like a dream out there, man. Glassy was... all day. What's that all glassy. about? Oh, see, Brian. <laughs> no, <Brian's>... no wind. <laughs> no wind, brother. I thought he was talking about glassy eyes. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it's glassy <laughs> all day, man. That was happening. Cool breeze, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I think that was the best surfing days of my whole surfing. You know, I was, I was on top of my game. Hanging yeah. with the O side boys down there, ripping. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. That was a good time. Was, yeah, Brian, we're 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 slowly wonderful. turning Brian into a surfer. It's taking time, you know. Yeah, that's I why I got the pink glasses. He's got, he's got, yeah, yeah he's dude, got those those surfer shades on. <laughs> Last week, I think he had on like a shark tooth necklace. He's starting. Yeah, to, he's getting good. Yeah, man. He's okay. <laughs> hey, hey, do your dude talk, bro. Do your dude talk, right? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, dude. Hey, man. Do you mind if I borrow some change? I gotta get some smokes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's a grit. Oh. He's a grit smoking surfer. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, long dark. He's, he's the kind. He's got his board on the beach and he's puffing his last puff before he paddles. Oh, yeah. Right, that right good. on, right in the water, that? That hanging right out. Flick the Who butt right out. Yeah, just Who's that? Sean Coco Beach. Sean freaking. Um, what was his uh. name? Dude used to go right, smoke it right down before he paddle out. Vollen, <laughs> exactly. Sean Ballen, the Captain. Yeah. Man, I yeah, used to know man. some hardcore yeah. smokers yeah. back yeah. in the day. Nothing like smoking a cigarette right before you go paddle out, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it'll it'll drift down some other place, you know. Don't worry yeah. about it. So I, yeah, I'm, no, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the most badass dude I ever met was this guy. His name was uh, Sergeant Cooper, and he was. Uh, about as tall as Raz, which was like, what are you, 6'5"? 6'3". 6'3", whatever. When you're over yeah. six, like, so yeah. he's like, yeah, you know, he's he was 6'4". He, he was tall and skinny, <laughs> and uh, this dude would road march with the backpack and all the shit, and he would smoke. He would chain smoke all day. Dude must have smoked four <laughs> packs a day. Always had a cigarette in his mouth. I was like, how do you do that? How's that even possible? <laughs> He's been doing it his whole life. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, smoke. I love, I love this whole new COVID thing. Everybody's got their mask, right? They're all worried about COVID, but they'll break out of grit and burn. Oh, yeah. Mask. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. Mask back on. Yeah. Like, all right. uh, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't try to put any logic into this. Okay. Cause yeah. you know, yeah, you're Mike. smoking grits all day, but you're worried about, you know, you're putting on a mask. It's yeah, like, but look at it this way. To all those smokers now, nobody has to look at your teeth. They can be as brown and as shitty as you want. Oh, that's want. true, yeah. You cover yeah, it right up. A lot, of, a lot of people are pretty good looking until they take their mask off. Right. I think a lot of people a lot of people like this right here. They're like, oh, I you're, look way better right They're here. like, damn, we look good. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, think about it. Chicks don't even have to put lipstick on no more. They just put their mask on. They're out. You know what I mean? It Hold on. You know. Hold on a second, darling. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Hey, you look that's better. a lot better. Oh, Let's yeah. Let's just yeah. keep it like I mean, that. Who needs beer <laughs> goggles when you get face masks, you know? Yeah. I had to show my ID somewhere the other day, and I showed it to him. I was all, oh, hey, wait. Do I need to cover up my face? So he just, yeah. He started laughing. Can you tell that's me by my eyebrows? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a different world we're in now. I was telling Raz that the other day. You know, we grew up in a good time, man. Where we were, you know, back in the day, the '90s, the, the like early 2000s. Year. Oh man. Oh yeah. No. We had no idea. We yeah, had no idea. idea. I feel. It actually, get I feel some for customer service. Today, you know. 
Yeah. I yeah, the new generation. Them. Yeah, I I agree, man. It's a uh, wow. Did you guys yeah. used to? La I used oh. to be one of those guys that laughed at like the Chinese or the Japanese when you'd see like footage of them, like, and they're like wearing masks, and I'm like, ah, look at that <laughs> stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, funny you say it, but I've spent a lot of time in Japan. I think I've probably gotten about eight trips over there. Um, when I would go to Japan and you see them in the winter time, there's a big motorcycle show over there that we go to every year um, or every other year. And the Japanese wore masks and I didn't think it was a big deal. I, I you know, obviously having handlers over there that we deal with that could explain to us what was going on. It, it was just a social thing. Like if you had the flu or you had a cold, you put it on, it just kind of helped stop the spread. Right. So to me, right. that was a great idea. I was like, Americans should do that more, but there's a difference when you do it voluntarily and it does help, but then now you're forced to do it and under the, you know, the pretense of what we're dealing with now, and I'm not trying to go down the politics road, but since you had brought it up, I always thought it was really cool how the Japanese just had such a re respect and their social community of that's just what they did. And I always thought Americans will never, would never do this, you know, and I, yeah, I was yeah. like that. now we're being forced to it and Obviously, a lot of people, you know, very virtuous, you know, will yell at you if you're not wearing a mask or whatever. It's just a yeah. different, you know, I never thought it was weird in Japan. And obviously now I think it's really weird, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I agree, oh. man. I, I, I did the same thing when I first, you know, went to Japan. I was like, whoa, dude, it is like, it's just something they did on the subways and on the, you know, yeah. it's like a, it's a respect thing, dude. It's like, they don't want to get sick or if they are, they don't want to give it, a, you know, so it's a. It's, it is crazy that now when I watch TV and everything, it's just, it's part of our life now. It's just, it's a trip, dude, you know? It's become such a thing about who's gotten it, which I get it. You know, right. once again, not making light of it, but we've right. been trained to be this, well, who's got it? Who's tested? Testing. Right. At the end of right. the day, it's like, well, who actually got sick? Let's look at the numbers and say, who actually is passing away? And then people jump on you, the virtue police, go, well, we shouldn't lose one life. Well, I haven't heard any people crying about diabetes or cancer or right. HIV lately or mm -hmm. even the flu in California. Right now, we have zero – no, I'm sorry. We had 19 flu cases. Uh -huh. You know what we have generally in, in this – San Thousand, Diego, 60,000. 60, We've had 39. We've had 19. Yeah. So uh, apparently the flu just fucking disappeared and COVID yeah. came. But yeah. you know what? A lot of people die from the flu every year, but you don't see on the cover of Time magazine, oh, the flu, these are our flu numbers. No, you're it's, totally yeah. right. Yeah. And you totally you know, get, I totally right about that. And I, and I get that. My opinion is you're scared to stay home if you're not go out. Eventually, if you get it and get the antibodies, then you're going to be okay anyway. So, right. you know, like... You know how many people I've, they brought up from the ER and they push them in the room and I pull them off the stretcher and I take all the sheets off and then they go, hey, man, we got to get this guy out of here. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Oh, he's positive. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I got a little blue yeah. mask on. Let me give you an example here, okay? And I go in a COVID room. I had two last week, okay? I got to put on... A freaking hair net. I don't even have any hair. I got to put on little booties on my shoes. I got to put on a gown. I got to put on a, a mask and then another mask over that and then a shield. But then when I come out, I take it and I wad it up and I throw it in a trash can and I wash my hands, blah, 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 you know. And then I go to the next room. Well, at the end of the night, I'd grab that garbage can with gloves on and I tie it up. And I take it and throw it in the regular garbage with everything else. So if it's so toxic, why isn't it going in a special hazardous, you know, like, right. oh, God, you know, some air might seep out of that bag. Right. It just doesn't make any sense, well, dude. When, when I can take my shirt and do this and people go, okay, you can come in, that tells you right there. If this was real, you the M400, whatever the hell that shit was called, you know, they yeah. would – it would be mandated. They would be out to everyone. It would be a big deal. But literally, when you can pull your freaking chums off and wrap around your face, people go, oh, yeah, that's cool. Oh, that's a that's got a skid yeah. mark on it. Um, but, <laughs> hey, it stopped the COVID. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, it, Better to put it, some it really, feces on it, your face. It, 
Dude, we should we should start an underwear mask brand and just sell them to people. Skid well, it has a little, great, remember dude. the tidy whites had the little pee pee hole right there? You could just go yeah. like this. You could smoke your cigarette. Yeah, you or, could drink when you're in the bar. Yeah, drink, eat, eat, and then just close the butthole back up. Mm-hmm. There you go. Little, little, <laughs> little pee pee hole. Right there where you could, little, hey, that's yeah, a yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah. The mask has a little button right there. You just, yeah. All right, so <laughs> so just to change change the deal a little bit, I want to. We were talking about motorcycles earlier. And right. I told these guys, so I never rode a bike. A bike. I never had a bike. Mm-hmm. But uh, I made this video where I played Dr. David Bummer. It was like the not-so-incredible Hulk. I was Dr. <laughs> David Bummer, and whenever I grew embarrassed or upset, a startling metamorphosis would, oc- would occur, and I would shrink, and I would lose everything but my shirt. And then when I turned back into David Bummer, all I had on was a shirt. <laughs> So at the end of the movie, the end of the video, I had to go get a, you know, I thumbed a ride to a guy on a motorcycle and I had to climb on the back of this motorcycle, bare assed. Oh, nuts to butts. That's what we call that. And ride, (laughs) and ride off into the sunset. sunset. That's only a case of emergency, nuts to butts. (laughs) So I was going to play this. I was going to play this for you guys and see what you thought. Let's check it. All right. so, so this is just the end. We're not going to bore everybody, but this is just the ending part. I've just turned back to David Bummer. Uh, wh- why did my iTunes just click on? <laughs> uh, well, they're tr- they're ready for you to go live, dude. I know, right? All right here we go. Here we go. Uh, there's a man. <laughs> nice bird bird legs. Nice. He looked like Mr. Bean, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cross back and stuff. Mind if I nuts the butts? <laughs> this dude's like, yeah, get on, dude. <laughs> Is that Jeff Dahmer? <laughs> said, I like to eat those legs like a chicken wing. <laughs> Brutal. You're brutal. Oh, oh. right there. Oh, oh all, yeah. Oh, man, that's right on the ground. Oh, oh. It's great. Oh. Oh. oh, man. That's that, pretty good. That reminds me of that Dumb and Dumber part, dude, when they ride off. Oh, of, yeah. Yeah. On the scooters. Yeah. yeah. Just when I classic. thought you couldn't do any worse. That was my acting. That was my acting debut back hey, then. Hey man, I like it, dude. Good, David Bummer. Yeah, David Bummer. I like the the. That was uh, a nice, nice idea. bum you had there. Yeah. That was a very <laughs> nice bum there, David. Very so, nice. Uh, uh, Damon, back to your motorcycle thing, dude. I mean, you you're a general manager now, you said, and uh, and what what's what's the future for you brother what do you see happening in the next five to ten years in your business and what's your goals <laughs> um ten years way too far out uh Ooh, five old. years yeah retirement. five years yeah uh, reti- retirement retirement do you see who just won, won the white house we ain't retiring <laughs> um yeah we uh have five years i don't know it's hard to say you know um the industry I'm in is flourishing right now. The COVID actually was really good for the motorcycle industry. A lot of people spent, I don't know, stimulus checks or they just, you know, it was an escape. So we're up a lot this year, like 30% in our business. Um, the apparel side of things had really taken a hit. People don't really need t-shirts and hats as much, I guess, when you sit inside in your sweatpants all day. Um, right. So, yeah, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to grow that, you know, there's a a lot of industry, a lot of work, a lot of business there to do, Um, you know, really the bigger future conversation is uh, where am I in 10 years, you know, do I still live in California, you know, based off of the way some things are going, definitely looking at property and trying to figure out where that may take us. So it's hard to say, I would probably would answer the question for you better about before COVID, but this is really kind of, you know, throwing a, throwing a change up in things. Um, I'm blessed to have a job. I'm blessed to work in the industry I'm in. I see, you know, a good future as long as things keep going in that direction. Um, you know, if the green new deal and the 
cuckoo birds on part of that don't throw in the boycott of combustion engines, then, you know, we'd have to move everything to motor, electric motorcycles, which aren't as cool at all. But, um, yeah, you know, I still see doing what I'm doing right here. It's cool because the surf industry is always, I feel like, kind of had a cap a little bit on it when you get older, man. I'm not 27 anymore. You know, I'm I'm a I'm an older gent now, and the motorcycle industry is good with that. You know, there's cats still 70s, 80s running their brands that they built, and you know they're still relevant and whatnot. Um, and that's always a big thing. You know, you need to kind of like move along as you go. You know, like playing and surf stuff when I was in my 20s and 30s. Is I think Brian's got some photos of you. I gave him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, show some photos, yeah. man. Well, I got oh, that photo. There, there you yeah, go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. That was uh, in some magazine, right? Yeah, Jap Japanese magazine, actually. Yeah, for a chopper show. Uh, that's that cool. That was before you were bearded up. Where's the ones with your beard, dude? I saw you uh, on Facebook. Hold on. Dude, I go, I, go, I go back and forth. That's a better photo right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I like that one. That one's cool. So, um, yeah. So, I, you know, to answer your question, I'm trying to navigate what I can do in the next couple of years, really, you know, see, see how, where that goes first. Um, you know, you never know. I could be off the grid in a couple of years and where'd Damon go? <laughs> Living up there in the trees. Why? <laughs> chickens, chickens and some guns. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a manifesto now. They call him the, yep. they call Get him the, uh, the Quattro yep. Bomber. <laughs> yep. The damn squirt bomber. You might just um, ride off on one of them Harleys into the sunset, dude. Just yeah. Pfft, pfft, I don't know. Just... You know what's always hard, Tim, though, is surfing. Like, we look at property here in California, and, you know, I, I always measure everything by how long does it take me to get to the beach. You know, I'm how the same way, dude. It, no. You know, check the surf cams. Oh, it's looking good. You know, I need to go surf. Um, that's, that's, that's the anchor, you know, that really, I mean, I've been surfing my whole life, so that's a really hard one to come to terms with. You know, do you move I, to, you know, Texas, Utah, Oklahoma, you know, Wyoming, yeah. Montana, you know, any of those places that would be pretty, pretty rad. But, you know, but wave pools now, you know, Waco is not looking too bad. I can move to yeah. Texas and have motorcycle business and go surf the wave pool. It's consistent. Yeah. Water's always yeah. too. I'm the same way, dude. You know, I, we, we talk about buying somewhere else, getting away from Hawaii and, but man, it's my, it's, it's everything to me, man. It keeps me, uh, grounded. You know, it's, it's hard to even think that you can't, you know, surf anymore. And I don't know. So yeah. I feel you on that, dude. That's, it's hard, man. So, Just motorcycles definitely give me like a, a taste of that freedom. But you know, when you, you pal out and get your hair wet and like, just, you know, even get one good wave in relation to whatever your skill set is at that point in time. You yeah. know, it may not be anything to anyone else, but you're like, hey, that's the best two turns I've done in a while. <laughs> you know, you kind of, kind of like after sex, you know, you feel a little bit like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Feels it. good. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. It's it, If you don't have it, it's, it's I don't know. It's, uh, you miss it been, hard. If you don't have it, you miss it, for real. Yeah, <laughs> sex, that's true. <laughs> Hey, I just want, hey, Damon, I want to give a shout out to your family because I know they'll be watching this. I love you, Madison, and I'm proud of you, and Egan, and your mom, and Trippy, man. I just want to give them some love. I love those people. They're like my second family. Shake a little yep. sugar on there. Yeah, yeah, tell them I said hi to you. Uncle Tim said what's up, and, uh, you know, I hope you guys keep it up. Also I'm so guys, stoked for uh, you taking the time to come on our show and be with us and talk story with us. It's been a great time, and uh, I hope the best for you in your future, and uh, I appreciate it, brother. Well, let's see. I mean, I've known you cats probably almost longer than just about anyone in my life, you know, Sean Slater and a few of the other Cocoa Beach boys. Um, new, meaning the cousin. You guys are cousins, right? Is that, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's my dad's brother's yeah, son. Yeah, he's a real McLamara. Yeah. It's hard to find yeah, those suckers. Real McLamara. Yeah, yeah, well. He's got some sharp shades on, so he fits. Fits in the yeah. crew. Sexy yeah. salad, bro. Yeah. I, I, let's do it again sometime. We can we can hone in on a topic at some point in time, too, if we really want to get down and dirty. But That's what I'm saying. saying. Let's it, get uh, dirty. Yeah. Let's get down. Yeah. Let's, have a, yep. let's have a few of these. I don't know if you're... Uh... Yeah. I, I actually, I stayed sober for this one. I've been <laughs> trying to cut that back a little bit. but no. All right. I didn't, I'll, we'll invite you back for that one. Hey, where's Rufus? You're a Jim Beam, Jim Beam drinker now, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. there's Rufus. Rufus, ah. Rufus came to say yeah. later. Yeah, all yeah. right, Rufus. Yeah, later, Rufus. <laughs> Oh, Brian's got the bottle over there. What you drinking, Buffalo out. Trace? No, I'm drinking some Bullet. <laughs> bullet. I'm working yeah, hard on trying to get them to be a sponsor, but you got to imbibe yeah. so Man. much of it. Yeah. What happened to it all? I think there's a hole in it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, David, good to see you, brother, man. You too, Looking gentlemen. Good, bro. Yeah, thanks, thanks for taking time, care of man. I love you, brother. Absolutely yeah. love you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's been another Matt Coast to Coast victory for the gang. Uh, fabulous guest with Damon. And uh, till next time, keep your uh, keep your keys close because the motorcycle's ready to run. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, D. Time and D.